My name is Ripul Gandhi. I am a, a physician practicing in Miami, Florida. I practice at the Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute as well as the Miami Cancer Institute. And it's really my pleasure today to present uh, my initial experience with utilization of the Caterpillar arterial embolization device. These are my disclosures. This is an overview of the Caterpillar embolization device. So it consists of both distal and proximal nitinol fiber segments, as you can see here, which are really designed to promote thrombus formation. And the distal segment is really designed to limit migration as well. There is a membrane here, which is made out of polyurethane and polyethylene, which really allows for rapid occlusion and limiting recanalization. There are three radio opaque markers actually on the device itself. And I'll show you those in a little bit better detail on the images and there it is detached via a screw mechanism. This is the product matrix overview and I don't wanna go through some of the, all the details on this busy slide, but a few of the things I wanna bring your attention to that there are three devices which are currently available. First is the Caterpillar micro arterial embolization device, which is designed to go through an 027 inner diameter microcatheter and treats vessels between 1.5 and four millimeters in arterial diameter. The intermediate size device goes through an 038 inner diameter catheter and treats vessels between three and six millimeters in diameter. And finally, we have the largest device, which goes through an 056 inner diameter catheter and treats vessels between five and seven millimeters in diameter. So I'm gonna be presenting a case here, a 46 year old gentleman with a history of colorectal cancer with metastatic disease to the liver as well as a solitary lung lesion, which was diagnosed in late of 2019. The patient was started on systemic chemotherapy with Fulflox and had a good performance status and normal liver function test with an elevated CEA. Here's a patient's a PET CT scan, which you can see that there's a large 12 centimeter mass within the right hepatic lobe, which is PET avid. And there's also a uh, smaller lesion within segment four of the left hepatic lobe. The patient also has an 8.8 .8 millimeter nodule in the left upper lobe of the lungs. So patient was presented at our GI multidisciplinary tumor board. And the plan was again for the patient to continue with the full Fox therapy, but was for the patient to have also concomitant yttrium 90 radioembolization of both the right hepatic lobe and the segment four lesion, which would allow for disease control and also allow for contralateral hepatic hypertrophy with the goal for eventual extended right hepatectomy and resection of the solitary pulmonary nodule. The radioembolization would also serve as a test of time approach to ensure that the patient didn't develop any other disease within the liver or elsewhere, which would preclude surgical resection. Here's the patient's superior mesenteric artery angiogram, and you can see filling through the pancreatic or duodenal collaterals uh, to the hepatic arteries. And this was due to a median arcuate ligament compression of the celiac axis. Here is the celiac axis, actually the uh, common hepatic arterial angiogram, which demonstrates conventional anatomy with um, a filling of, uh, here you can see the GDA, the right hepatic artery, left hepatic artery, and you can see these hypervascular tumors uh, in the liver corresponding, corresponding to the cross-sectional imaging selected out the left hepatic artery here. And you can see that here's a, a classic uh, appearance of a right gastric artery. And the goal was to embolize this right gastric artery to prevent any um, repercussions of inadvertent delivery of Y90 into this vessel, which can result in a, a gastric ulceration. Here, a 027 inner diameter microcatheter was utilized to select the right gastric artery here. And you can see a pretty classic appearance of the right gastric artery. This vessel measured about three millimeters in diameter. So the caterpillar microarterial embolization device, which is designed to treat vessels between 1.5 and four millimeters in vessel diameter was really ideal for treatment of this vessel. And this uh, device tracked uh, quite uh, smoothly along uh, the curvature of this vessel uh, to the desired embolization uh, site here. And here you can see the microcatheter being retracted uh, to uh, to subsequently deploy uh, this device in the desired location here at the proximal right gastric artery. And then this deployed um, device uh, following uh, counterclockwise uh, deployment of the uh, device uh, actually shows the three radio opaque markers here showed them very well 
and uh, it was deployed at the exact location in the proximal right gastric artery. This is a subsequent uh, left hepatic angiogram, which demonstrates immediate occlusion of uh, this right gastric artery in this uh, case. And this is the follow-up imaging, which demonstrates no new lesions within the liver. Uh, there are there are, is still some residual enhancement within uh, the treated lesions, although they were diffusion negative. And you can see some diffusional changes with contralateral left hepatic hypertrophy, which will allow for uh, an extended right hepatectomy as well as resection of the pulmonary nodule. So in summary, this caterpillar microarterial embolization device resulted in rapid occlusion of the right gastric artery with a single device. And in this case, resulted in immediate occlusion and actually tracked very nicely through this tortuous anatomy. Um, a couple of the other things I wanna you know, bring your attention to with regard to this device, it did allow for very accurate placement of the device. And you do have the ability to remove the device if you did not deploy it at the actual desired location. As I showed you on one of the slides, the three radio cake markers really allow for good visualization of the device under fluoroscopy. And uh, the mechanical detachment device is very easy to utilize. We do need more studies, however, to really compare its efficacy as well as its cost effectiveness compared to other devices on the market, including detachable coils and other embolic, uh, embolic plugs.